Hi YouTube, this is Felicia with Bible Scraps, and I hope you all are blessed no matter where you are in God's part of the world. It is a beautiful morning in my neck of the woods. The last week, the last couple weeks, we have had truly beautiful spring weather, perfect weather, and it's a little cool outside. We got rain the other day, and just experiencing beautiful days. So I hope it's beautiful no matter where you are in God's part of the world. And this video is all about my grandma, my precious grandma. I picked up this um, just this past week from a thrift store and I had to scoop it up. It says grandma's kitchen. And somebody probably stenciled grandma's kitchen or perhaps back in the year and maybe even now at certain shops you could find something like this but it has the push pins in it and I had to pick this up it's so adorable so precious um, Wow many of you know for the last year or years because my grandma has always been in my life by the way this video is a tribute to all of the grandmas and not just any type of grandma that old-fashioned that heirloom that homespun type grandma and that's the kind of grandma that I had I say had because she is now with the Heavenly Father. And I am so grateful to have experienced, because now it's a, it's a lost experience, I believe, unfortunately. But I was so blessed and honored to have experienced that old-fashioned type grandma. And it's bittersweet sweet because I know that my grandma, she was a devout Christian. I know where she's at. She is with her Lord and Savior eternally. And I do believe that one day we shall meet again. But it's bitter because, well, many different reasons. Number one, she was my grandma and I don't have a grandma anymore. And to never be able to use that word again, grandma, well, I'm going to have to get used to that. I had a grandmother longer, more than twice as long as I had a mother. So my grandmother meant a whole lot to me. It's the loss of an era. My grandmother was blessed to live a good life and a rather long life. She was close to 91 years old when the Lord called her home. But the loss of her and her traditions and her way, there's just no one out there like my grandma. I've said this before many times. I, now I say had, but when I used to say it, I would say I have a grandma of grandmas. My grandma was truly, I don't know if I could pay her tribute or um, honor her. I'm going to do my best. But she was the type of grandma up until the day the Lord called her home. She would use the phrase, bless your heart. And you just don't hear people using that phrase today. But she comes from that era. Um, wow. Wow. You know, I'll say this. If you, if you have grandparents, don't take them for granted. Call them up. Talk. Talk to them. If you live locally, go by and see them. I um, pulled out a hard drive. And I typed in the name grandma 
and a file came up. And I guess years ago, maybe about 20 years ago, I started um, interviewing my grandma. However, I never went back to this particular file. And I know I have other files that might not be named grandma, but I just typed in grandma to see what came up. And I did have a lot of pictures under the name grandma. But anyway, um, well over 20 years ago, I had started to interview my grandma. And in this video, I'm going to offer some tips and things you can do. Like number one, you could interview. Back then, I would type as my grandma talked. But what you could also do and what I've been doing for decades, let's see, well, well over 25 years, if not longer, I audio recorded. Up until my grandmother's death, I would grab my phone. You can download a audio recorder app. Some phones already come with one, but I, I would just record my grandma. Many of you know she had dementia, and even when she was in that state of dementia, which means she, when she wasn't present, when she wasn't aware, she would um, reminisce about childhood. She would just talk to herself and I would let my recorder go. And I learned some things about my grandma. You know, there's something fascinating about dementia and Alzheimer's when, when they began to uh, revert back to their childhood. Listen, because I believe those memories are for the most part, real. They really happened. And so I learned some things about my precious, beloved grandmother by either interviewing her or by um, recording her as she was reminiscing, talking to herself. And I was not looking for this today, though I thought about this um, the last several weeks and I just happened to come across it and I shared this in a video several years ago because um, I have well if you don't know people we live to die and it's just a matter of time and with my grandmother getting up in age I knew inevitably it would happen and so throughout the years including what I did here one of my regrets is not taking advantage of the opportunities I had when my grandmother was younger. I mean, like in her 70s and even her 80s, when her mind was totally still there. Even, well, yeah, she died when she was 90. So in her mid-80s, I, oh, wow. You know, I the eye is never satisfied. But in my case, I wish I had more. Though I feel like I have a lot, I still wish I had more. So what I did this one day, you are looking at antique. I believe this is antique scrapbooking paper. I pulled this from a an antique scrapbook. And I used a rubber stamp and I stamped out the journaling, the recipe journaling lines. And then for this one here, I taken my sister and my grandmother out to eat. So I took this with me. I had this pre-planned. This is a tip for you all. I took this with me and I had my grandmother, <laughs> one of my favorite dishes that she made was greens. And like collard or mustard or a mixture. And um, I had her write down what she remembered about her recipe for greens. Now, I don't understand what some of this is. Maybe if I look at it hard enough, I'll understand it. But it wasn't about the recipe per se. It was about having a recipe card from my grandma. So what I'm going to do is use my, um, my recipe dye. Oh, goodness, if it'll fit. And I am going to cut out this recipe 
and I'll have a antique because I used antique paper. I'll have a antique recipe card from my grandma. Isn't that clever? Now, as I reminisce and go through her things, I have come across some of her recipes and um, other cookbook type ephemera, which I'll cherish. This right here, I have my sister, TT <laughs> <T>. Nuggets. <laughs> this is so funny. Okay, years ago, my sister must have been, I don't think she was 18 yet. So she was probably maybe 16 years old. I obviously told her to fry chicken. <laughs> and she didn't know how to cut the chicken up. So... I think I had left the house and I came home and my sister had fried up. She had these small pieces of chicken because she didn't once again know how to cut it up. It ended up being the best tasting chicken ever. <laughs> and so I called, well, the name of this recipe is TT Nuggets. And of course, I don't think she remembered everything she put in it, but I wanted her I wanted a recipe in her handwriting. And so I had her do the same thing I had grandma do. But I just thought it was so funny because I got so mad at her. I'm like, where's the bones? Right? There were no bones. She had just took a knife and pieced off chicken from the different parts. But it was so of cute. Course, and I now... loved that memory, which is why I had her write it down. So that's what you can do. You can, you don't have to use antique paper. What you can do is just have your grandma, have your great aunts, whoever it may be. You can buy the recipe cards or you can do like I did. Make your own, make antique or vintage recipe cards. Before I cut these down, I will scan these first because it's going to be historical, traditional, family ephemera. Love, love, love that. Okay, um, I, as I reflect, and this video, once again, is not, I can't pay homage to my grandma in just one video. So you guys will hear me in upcoming videos reflect and talk a lot about my grandmother. I mean, I, I have to. She's a part of me. She's in me. I, I have some of her traditions and her ways instilled in me. And I never want to forget about that. So now, and to help grieve. Talking helps with the grieving process. And I just loved my grandma. I I loved what she was, who she was, what she represented. And I, I feel sorry for the generation of today because they don't make grandmas like my grandma anymore. They're not made. You're born like that, right? And unfortunately... Today's time is all about these new age grandmas. They want to look as young as their grandkids. They don't hold the same traditions as the old fashioned grandma. So I fear it's a lost experience. I mean, these grandmas today, the houses look different. It's going to be new traditions made. And I don't know if I would want to call it a tradition. I mean, they just don't make grandmas like the grandmas that a lot of you can relate to. So if you have your, well, if you have a grandma, especially if you have a old fashioned homespun grandma, get with your grandma in her kitchen. Get with your grandma in her sewing or knitting room. Get with your grandma out in her garden. My grandmother, she did all of those things. I had a recovered memory a couple years ago, if that. I had totally forgotten about it, but my grandmother taught me how to crochet when I was in um, primary school, maybe fourth, fifth grade. 
it, I had forgotten all about that. And I remember I didn't learn much, but she taught me and I was able to do, and I don't know what it's called, but I did a long row and how I wish I had that today. But it was my grandma who taught me how to crochet. <laughs> my grandmother was the type I remember her and with her snapping peas, cracking walnuts, picking greens. Um, one time, <laughs> so many different memories are flooding my mind. But And I don't even know. My grandmother, she had to have known these people. But I have pictures. It was when my mom was alive. And my mom, she's been deceased this year, uh, 30 years so I, I was a teenager still, but I have pictures of us in this grape, this vineyard, picking grapes. <laughs> so my grandmother and my mom, they come from that era, picking grapes, picking cotton. I used to sit with my grandma and pick greens, you know, um, crack walnuts, we used to pick nuts. I don't even know where we were, but we would pick nuts. I remember, and I hope I can still find her, her nutcracker. She probably got several of them because my grandmother was a hoarder. And I'll talk about that perhaps in this video. I'm dealing with her estate now and she had so much stuff. It's overwhelming. And it it's making me take a critical look at everything I have seeing all that she has and I am the one left to clean up. Yeah, that responsibility falls on me and it's overwhelming just thinking about it. And that's one thing my husband says, I inherited from grandma. I'm a hoarder, but I'm nowhere near as bad as she was. Because let me tell you, my grandma qualified to be on that series about five or six years ago, the city fined her. She has a nice size backyard and she got fined after all these years because she just had so much stuff in her backyard. And it took several different hallways to get her backyard cleared. But I remember this one time she was back there and I had people back there and she had so much stuff. She had a lot of glass. She had a lot of beautiful stuff, but it was so much. I didn't have time to sift and sort. I just had it to, I had to get rid of it. But she was back there this one day and she had a lot of clothes back there in um, large garbage cans and whatever. But she actually cried. She was crying as we were getting rid of some of her stuff. And so in the future, what I had to do was take her away from home. I couldn't let her, um, you know, watch us get rid of her things because she, she was in her right mind, but it was her stuff. It was her stuff. And, you know, we get connected to our things. But anyway, my grandma's home is like an antique store, a flea market, <laughs> She don't have a basement. Her home, her whole home is like a basement. Like, it's a wonder. It's one of the wonders of my family. And one wonder is, how can, I don't know how this happened. My grandmother has two bedrooms. And literally, both bedrooms are so jam-packed with stuff that it locked us out of the rooms. Like we cannot open the doors to get in there. How does that happen? Like did an avalanche happen overnight and cause things to fall down? But I just don't know how that happens. So that's what I'm dealing with. A whole house filled with all different types of things. And of course, I want to keep some of my grandma stuff. As a matter of fact, well, my grandmother, she was a devout Christian. She was in church Sunday morning, Sunday school, and then Sunday morning service, and then Sunday night service. Um, Tuesday night was senior choir rehearsal. Of course, she was there. My grandma was famous in our local church for singing a song. When you hear about my home going, don't worry about me. 
everybody who um, knows my grandma knows her singing that song. And I know I'm kind of everywhere. Once again, this is a tribute to my grandma and all grandmas, but uh, my grandma was so funny in church. Okay, different things are coming to mind. <laughs> and I will have all this written up for my family. I'm working on a memoir. And I'm also working on a little memory book for my 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 young my little sister. I only have one sister. She's younger than me. But anyway, my grandma, she uh she was a devout Christian goer. She was in church uh the the Sunday, the Tuesday, the Wednesday night and Friday night Bible study. Once a month on Saturday was the business meeting. She was at all of those services. But Sunday, my grandma, she was the best dressed in the church. Every black church got a, a mother of the church or someone in the church that dresses up from the head all the way down. And that was my grandma. She was known for the church hats. <laughs> every church, every black church got at least one woman. And that one woman in our church was my grandma. She was always decked out in a in a uh, different hat. And I was able to get in her bedroom with prayer. <laughs> I was praying the whole time. People, I had to squeeze through the door to get in. And then when I stepped in her room, I didn't step on the floor. I stepped on mounds and heaps of clothes. And I was praying, Lord, because I know something is living in that bedroom. Them rats, right? <laughs> but I was praying because I'm scared of them rats. And I was praying that I didn't break. I broke one ankle. I didn't want to break it again or break the other one. But while I was in there... I did, um, in my living room right now, I have a huge, a huge bag. It's one of the largest lawn bags you can buy. And it's filled, it overfloweth with some of her church hats. I say some of them because I didn't get them all. But while I was up on a big mound of clothes in her room, I was able to see, um, the very top inside of one of her cabinets and I pulled out a bag and people I I'd never seen these before I know these been in her room probably for decades look what I found these I'm gonna call them the church hats though my grandmother she has hats that's much more elaborate but I will cherish these forever they're the cutest and they have these little, um, whatever they're called, pins that you can pin, I guess, to a hat, to your hair. But I had never seen, I didn't know she had these. So in some way, I'm going to maybe display these in a cabinet. I would love to have a curio cabinet filled with hats that I remember her wearing or perhaps hats that she's wearing in pictures. And of course, I'll put these in there as well. But my grandmother, when it come to hats, whew, she was all about the hats Sunday mornings. And what I also recall about Sunday mornings, in addition to her singing that song, <laughs> Okay, in the black church, and it could be white churches too, but in the black church, it was all about getting the Holy Ghost. When somebody got, quote unquote, the Holy Ghost and would break out in a Holy Ghost dance, and it looks different. <laughs> well, my grandma's Holy Ghost dance looked different from your standard Holy Ghost dance. If you are black, you know what I'm talking about when I say the Holy Ghost dance, right? When somebody get filled with the spirit, they break out people in this dance. That's hilarious. We grew up as kids. As a matter of fact, every now and again, I'll make fun of that dance and start doing it. <laughs> but anyway, my grandmother had a dance, a Holy Ghost dance that was all her own and she was so known by it 
the people named it the chicken dance because she looked like a chicken doing the Holy Ghost dance. <laughs> so she's known for that. Once again, she's known for her song, When You Hear of My Home Going, Don't Worry About Me. Oh, goodness. I can sing that song right now. Of course, I can't sing it like her. She would get requests all the time to sing that song. And I do have her singing that song. I audio recorded her. I'm sure I have her singing it in church. I have a lot of audio tapes, hundreds people of audio tapes in the regular size, but also in the small size. I have been recording. I'm the family scribe. I hold the scroll. I'm the memory keeper. I just have hundreds and hundreds. And then that don't include my recordings on, I have three audio recorders. Yeah, three, four of them actually. <laughs> so that don't include all of those recordings and it don't include the recordings I have on my phone. <laughs> but anyway, um, another thing I remember about my grandma in church was her testimony. And about 10 years ago, I made a card with my grandma's actual testimony on it. It sounds similar to a lot of, and I don't know if it's a Southern thing or a Black church thing, but a lot of the senior members, the mothers of the church, they have a similar testimony. And of course, they might tweak it, but based on what I remember, what I can recall right now, it goes something like this. First, give an honor to God. Wait. To the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, to the saints and friends. Oh my goodness. I used to know it people by heart. As a matter of fact, when I would sit in church and as my grandmother testified, I don't know how popular testimony service is in churches today, but growing up, an hour was spent to people standing up testifying or what I say, telling a business and everybody else's business because testimony service wasn't all about testifying, right? But my grandma had the same testimony. And as she was testifying, I would be moving my lips testifying with her because I knew what she was going to say. <laughs> yeah, about 10 years ago, I made a card in honor of her testimony. And I do have my grandma testifying. I think the last year, I asked her, I'm like, Grandma, do you remember how to testify? And she would never want to do it because she couldn't fake it. If she started testifying, she started crying. She started praising God. And this one time she started testifying, I just wanted to get the testimony. But she had to stop because she felt the spirit and she just couldn't fake it. It, it was always real real with her. My grandmother had a lot of Bibles and I do have some of her Bibles here with me. And I, there's a lot, Whew, man, she also played the tambourine, which my son who stationed in Germany, he actually left yesterday. He was here for almost two weeks and, um, he, he arrived back in Europe, I think midnight our time this morning. But anyway, he took my sister to my grandma's house. Oh, I have to run upstairs and get it, you guys, because he found a tambourine that I don't recall. Let me go get it. Check out this tambourine. I don't recall this tambourine. I have my grandmother's other tambourine upstairs. It's missing these thingies here. And there's one missing here. I'm going to have it repaired. But he brought this to me. And I'm like, I don't remember this. You know, let me see if I could find. Well, my grandmother was one of the few members who played the tambourine. I could only think of one other member that played the tambourine. And boy, she played it. I'm looking for this picture. Well, this is an older picture. This might be, oh, 20 years ago, 15 years ago. 
20 years ago. This is my grandma. And um, this is her daughter who was like my sister. She's holding my grandmother's tambourine that I have upstairs. And my aunt, she's deceased. She was the baby to my grandma. But that's, that's my grandma there. They're on the steps of the church. And let me see. Oh, okay. Here's a cool. Okay. This was, well, this car is still in our family. It's actually in the garage of my my childhood home. The city, when the city um, find my grandma, I put her her car in my my family um, my family home's garage. By the way, my childhood home it's right around the block from my grandma, just several minutes walking distance. So we lived in the same neighborhood as my grandma. Um, my mom bought our house when we, my mom and dad, I think I was two years old. And my grandma was living in her home already. So we grew up spending a lot of time with my grandma. As a matter of fact, before we went to school, we walked to school we stopped at my grandma's house and she would look over us to make sure there was no lint in our hair to make sure our face was washed, our clothes was cleaned. And when we got out of school, we stopped at my grandma's house and she always had Kool-Aid or tea made for us. So um, I don't remember specifics, but I do generally remember that. I remember my grandma on the days that were cold she, all the homes in the area, including our childhood home, had wall heaters. And my grandmother also had wall heaters, but she would also warm her home with her oven. She would leave her oven door open and, and put it down, pull it down. So I have those memories. But this car here, you guys, I remember when my grandma got this car. It was the coolest car ever. It's a Cougar. It's probably vintage now. I don't see these cars anymore, but it's in my favorite color. It's a two-tone brown and an almond like cream color. But anyway, this car was cool because my grandmother had an alarm that talked. And it was the first time I ever remember hearing a car talk. So if you stood too close to this car, it would say in a man's voice, please step back. From the car. <laughs> Please step back from the car. It was so cool. And I have a lot of memories driving in this car and my grandma driving in her cougar. And once again, it's it's in my possession. <laughs> I'm done with this video and I'm editing out on my patio. And as I edit the video and listening, I'm remembering things about my grandma. Okay, I have to comment about how my grandma drove. Everybody who knew her, when they saw her on the streets, my grandma drove so slow. I'm surprised she's never gotten a ticket for driving too slow. We used to tease her and say, Grandma, you are going to get a ticket. She never took the freeway. She always took the, the, the main roads and streets she would not get in the fast lane, but the way she drove, I mean, she never looked to her left or right. She looked straight ahead and I could just see her in her cougar with her both hands on the wheel looking straight ahead. <laughs> she drove so slow, it would get on my nerves. It took us forever to get where we needed to go because grandma just drove slow <laughs> but there's um there's a larger picture i'm going to oh wait a minute well she don't have a church hat on right here but this is my grandma right here and she has her tambourine i have this upstairs and she's this must this was the first sunday and my grandma was part of the senior choir and she was a mother of the church and every first sunday they all wore white. I'm surprised she don't have a hat on right there. And I'll share this picture. This is my grandpa and my grandma. 
um, they visited me, my family, this particular, I don't know, this was probably about 15 years ago. My grandpa died, let's see, he died in 2009. So maybe this was 2007 or eight. But my, my grandma, my grandparents, they have always been a part of my life. Okay, this is even older, and you can't see her face, but you see she got on a big hat right there, and this is right in front of her, her house. Oh, my grandma's yard. Oh, my goodness. And this is me and my grandma, and she has on a hat there. I have to um, pay attention to all the hats because I definitely want to keep the hats that I have pictures of her wearing. And I have a lot of pictures of my grandma. This one, uh, okay, maybe I'll share this one when I talk about a particular story. You guys, I forgot where I left off, but let me move to my grandma's yard. Because... And I've said this many times before in videos, my, well, number one, my grandmother had the best yard in her community. There was no yard that was better. Okay, let me go back to this picture. You can't really, this picture don't, no, it don't do justice. But anyway, my grandmother, she loved flowers. She loved to garden. She planted greens twice a year. And my grandmother gardened all the way up until maybe 88. She had some type of garden. Um, yeah, she planted up until the last couple years. But anyway, oh, and I, I'm so, thank you, Lord. About 10 years ago, I filmed my grandma in her backyard in her garden. And I found those pictures um, several weeks ago. And anyway, I'm so happy to have them because I have her in her garden with her greens and whatever else she's planting. And they mean everything to me. I inherited my love for gardening. I got it from my grandma. I have been gardening about 30 years. And I real I have realized over the years that I picked that up from her. Not only did I pick that up from her, we share similar styles when it comes to um, lawn decor and decoration. My grandmother, people, in her backyard right now, you will find a wheelbarrow. You will find a, um, a kitchen sink used as a planter. It's either a sink or a tub. But then again, I'm thinking there's two of them. So she might have one of each um, in her backyard right now. There's a wood, an antique wood burning oven. I do want to bring that to my house. But my grandmother's style was junky, eclectic. Um, it, it It's what she created vignettes and see in Somerset magazines. When you open them up, that was my grandmother's style. I have, and I'm so blessed when I walk into my backyard and walk into my garden, I can't help but think about my grandma because over the years, I've brought some of her pieces to my yard. And last year, when it was obvious, my grandmother has lived with me full time the last year. It was obvious she would never return back home. I um, had some of her larger pieces brought to my home. So I have her her wrought iron um, bench. I have her bistro set. My grandmother would take wrought iron chairs. I'm looking at some right now. And I don't know if... They used to be chairs, but they're wrought iron with a beautiful um, decorative design, but she used them as planters. So I have two different types in my backyard right now. I have a lot of her flower pots. And one thing I tried to bring over two years ago, okay, the milk can is precious to me. 
it's precious to me. <laughs> it's so precious to me. Whenever I find these, a die or a stamp, I got this stamp this year. I had never seen this one before. But it's precious to me because for, I don't know, 20 years or more, my grandmother, she has, she had four of these in her front yard used as planters and they're white. A couple years ago, I took the dirt out of one of them because they're very, very heavy. They probably weigh 40 pounds. But then again, I think hers got stuck in the ground, but I took out all the dirt only to find that the bottom had totally disintegrated. And I still could have brought over the top part to use as decor because just because it's busted, you can still use it as decor, lawn decor. But I didn't do it and I think it got thrown out, but she still has three in her yard. So I need to bring those over. This picture right here really don't do my grandma's yard justice because you can't really she planted perennials and i do have some that i took from her yard maybe five years ago but when i was at her house last week i saw that the pink perennials i have the purple ones and they come up every year i gotta go back to her house and get the pink ones because they came up you don't see any of her flowers or her crepe myrtle trees, which I need to pick up one because I learned about crepe myrtles because she had them in her yard. But this is a picture of my grandma here. And this picture, I mean, man, she was probably 70. This is probably over 20 years. And you probably can't see, but my grandmother, she, she keeps her lights up for Christmas. But right here and right here are the vintage metal white milk cans and you don't see the other two in the picture but she got flower pots she got a lot of um different types of steaks this santa claus stayed out in her flower bed all year i think that's in the oh that is in the garage oh my goodness that's the one that's in her garage Oh, I have to get that one because that's old. And you can't see this stand here. This is in my backyard. It's it's tall. People use those in the house. But my grandmother used things um, from the house and her yard. A beautiful yard. She has a um, a picnic bench over here on this side. You can't see it. Um, but just had the best yard, the most colorful and adorned decorative yard in her community. As a matter of fact, it's only one house I've been to. And this woman was a neighbor of mine's down the street. I went to her house and it was totally, her, her yard was totally reminiscent of my grandma's yard. So outside of myself, I don't know of yards like that. But you would find ladders in her backyard, different types of buckets. Um, what else? Oh my goodness. Everything, all that country charm, the things that people are into upcycling and recycling today. You found those things in my grandmother's yard. And I inherited that. And this dye here, I love it. You probably can't see the the texture on it but this symbol I for years I have been searching for this particular style this shape of a milk can and um the day after my grandma died and I wasn't going to go but my husband said he he would go with me I had been waiting for the antique fair to open up and my grandma died on a Saturday. She actually died uh, the day before Easter. Did she die the day before Easter? Yeah, she did. But that Easter Sunday, I think that's the day of the antique fair. Okay, my days could be mixed up. But anyway, my husband went with me. And I, I had one of these jugs on my mind. This is what... I went to the antique fair looking for one of these and I found one 
It's green. I'm going to paint it. It's not as big as my grandma's, but it's big. But I was elated to find one. And then I found one from a thrift store a couple weeks ago. But I think you could find something similar at Hobby Lobby. So the ones Hobby Lobby has, and I saw one at Big Lots. Those are more decorative type ones. I want the industrial type ones to use as planters in the garden. Whenever I see this shape, I can't help but think about my grandma. And this will go in this memory book I'm working on for my sister. She's not ready to look at any pictures or see any videos. So I put this on pause and I started working on different things. But um, this reminds me, well, it says grandmas, for, grandmas are forever. And you guys, my favorite, this cow here, I'm going to do a video just dedicated to the cow because over the last several years, I have fallen in love with the cow. <laughs> and this is a rubber, a vintage rubber stamp image here. I love this cow. I have a cow planter in my garden and I've named the cow Thelma. <laughs> <laughs> love, love, love me some Thelma. And she's holding her milk can there. But I, so this is like a heritage memory book, but I didn't want it to scream heritage because that's death. And you know what it is when you look at it. When you look at this, you don't necessarily think that someone has passed away. You look more closely and you realize, yeah, so it doesn't scream like death or memorial and um i used all vintage pretty much vintage scrapbooking products here so anyway i'm working on this for my sister i still have to decorate the cover and i got a lot to do but i want to quickly flip through some pages here um all of these pages came from vintage ideals magazine magazines i sifted i flipped through maybe 40 to 50 and tore out the pages i wanted and recycled the rest of them and i'm doing that too as a matter of fact it's a, a project i'm working on now i'm doing the same thing for um well i'll talk more about that in a separate video but i'm doing the same thing for other magazines but these are some images that reminds me of grandma. And I hope I did not accidentally get rid of the, the other Christmas ones I had. In some way, fashion, or form, I'm going to use these. But these remind me of grandma. A lot of the older people, and I had flashbacks of a couple friends my grandma had, they could have been relatives in the area. When you went to their house, they always had jars of candy. And that's what I remember about my grandma's house and other older people's houses that I used to go to. So I kept that image. My grandmother, she canned. How I wish I had pictures or will come across pictures of her and her, her canning. Um... To this day, I believe she has cases of canned goods in her bedroom because she used to store them out in her garage or under her bed. But it's so much stuff in there, no telling what's in there. But this image definitely reminds me of Grandma. Speaking of canning, and I shared a video maybe six, seven years ago, I found a new case of these mason jars in my grandmother's um in the video i said it was a shed but it's not a shed my grandmother has a mini camper in her backyard and for years i just refused to go in it because i'm like something is waiting on me in there and i'm not going up in there five six seven years ago whenever it was i decided to go in there and i went in there and i found a brand new case of these mason jars with a different um 
designs on them. I also found some yarn, vintage yarn, because she did uh, knit. And I also found, um, and you know what? I, I, I'm beating myself up right now because I, I should have took better care to take care of these. But my grandmother was a gardener. And I found um, the actual snap pea pods. And of course, they were dried out, but they were still whole. And now I don't know what I did with them. I have them in the backyard in a bag. And I don't know. I had the bag inside of a of a um, a slow cooker. Not a slow cooker, but what do you call those things? A smoker. But I got rid of the smoker last year, and now I don't know where the bag is. But anyway, um, I will cherish. I will cherish these mason jars forever because these came from my grandma. And how I wish I had pictures of her her canned goods or of her, um, no, in the kitchen canning. But I thank God for the memories I have. Um, this picture reminds me of grandma, just the whole setup, the whole look. This is a meat grinder. She probably got something like this at her home in her garage. See, the grandmas today, they don't have kitchens that look like this. People, my kitchen, I do not want a modern kitchen. We will move soon. And I do not want some new age kitchen. I'm convinced the food will not taste good because the whole atmosphere is just going to mess it up. <laughs> no, I want a country. I want a, well, I'm going to have a part of my kitchen dedicated to my grandma. I'm going to keep this. This is in my kitchen now. But um, I found this shelf from the thrift store last year when the stores started to reopen. And I didn't buy it at first, but I got in my car, then went back into the store and bought it. It is so beautiful. I can't find it in my garage, but it's a long shelf and it has the hooks on it. But engraved in the wood is grandma. I'm going to have a part of my kitchen dedicated to my grandma. This reminds me of my grandma this picture here. I mean, you would find stuff like that in her backyard. This reminds me of her. How I wish to find what I might do, I can, well, man, it would be nice to find this. This is vintage wallpaper. It would be nice to find that in scrapbooking paper. I love that. My grandmother, once again, was a gardener. I did find some of her seed packets. Oh, and you know what? I'm not going to share it in this video. I did share it years ago. I found a vintage recipe, um, Betty Crocker type thing at her house. This was years ago when I found it before like junk journaling and using recipe cards was popular in junk journaling, or perhaps it was, and I just didn't know it. But anyway, I, I threw the cards out and kept the, um, I kept her, I, I kept the compartment and I'm thinking of, I have many different types of those, but man, I'm thinking of two. I have one on my refrigerator right now. And I think that one is the one I got from my grandma's years ago. I altered one and now I'm confused right now as far as which one was hers, but I did find some recipe cards in her piano seat mm-hmm because my grandmother has a piano so this picture reminds me of grandma because my grandma spent every day she was out on her porch i have a picture of her on her porch i think last year um our childhood home had a porch so i spent a lot of time my family spent a lot of time on the porch and my grandmother has a bench i I want to get that bench off her porch and bring it to my house. So the porch has great significance. And look, there's a poem, the old porch swing there. Here's a milk can. This looks just like my grandma's, except hers was white. 
<laughs> so you know I had to keep that. What a friend we have in Jesus. My grandma, the last month of her life, the Lord brought back her mind. She was in her right mind, people. She she knew who I was. She was able to sing and pray and talk. And um, she was able to pray. Hallelujah. So anything that deals with Jesus reminds me of grandma because Jesus was her life. And here, grandma's quilt. I do. My grandmother, I remember she used to make quilts. The thing is, my grandma has so much stuff. I don't know what she made or what she purchased from a flea market, a thrift store, because my grandma was the thrifting queen. My grandma was the type of grandma, people, it was no shame in her game. If anybody gave out free food, she was in the line. Let me tell you, free food, free clothes, that was my grandma. And growing up, it was embarrassing because she always went to thrift stores. Now it's the thing. But growing up, shopping at thrift stores and shopping at Kmart, nobody wanted to be associated with that, right? But Kmart was our store. <laughs> I loved me some Kmart. But as a kid, it was embarrassing going to school saying you were wearing secondhand clothes or clothes from Kmart. <laughs> but that was my grandma. And... um. Uh, there's there's lots of quilts at her house. As a matter of fact, darn it, a couple years ago, I brought one over, but I let my dogs sleep on it and they tore it up. But anyway, this reminds me of grandma with all the lace and look at the doilies. My grandma used to, same thing. Oh, and these candle pillars too. Totally reminiscent of grandma. Um... What I appreciate today when I look back at pictures and I've been more mindful of doing this, you can you can create your photographs like this yourself. I'll just walk through my house and take pictures of how it looks right then and there. Not remembering much from childhood, not having a lot of childhood pictures. When I the pictures I do have, if there's anything on the wall and it's I inspect that with my magnifier because those things are precious to me today and how I wish to come across more pictures like that, not just of people, but of what's on the wall, what's in that cabinet. Those mean so much more to me than some people in a picture. So you can create this yourself. Grab your cell phone. Thank God for the technology of cell phones. We can video with them, take pictures. We can um, record audio. There's really no excuse not to keep memories now with cell phones. And you can upload everything to your cloud. So you always have storage. This reminds me of my grandma. My grandmother just a lot of knickknacks, a lot of, I got rid of a lot of her glass during one of the hallways, but my grandmother still has, and this is like from 30, 40 years ago, she still has those glass pieces that my aunt and uncle would win from the fair. And you know what? Yeah, they're going to find a way at my house. <laughs> but she, um, she has all that stuff and stuff that she's picked up. My grandmother, people from the neighborhood would bring stuff to her house. So she didn't have to, in her last years, she couldn't drive. But that didn't keep her from shopping because people would still bring things over. I'm like, Grandma, who do you owe money to? How are you shopping? Well, people in the neighborhood would bring her stuff. And of course, she would buy it from them. <laughs> Okay, this, love this, love, 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 love. I know my grandma used to can, um, she she made jelly. I don't know what else she can though, but I love that. I can myself. It's been several years. Actually, I canned last year, but I, I didn't boil it. <laughs> I just put it in the freezer. <laughs> okay, and this totally, my grandmother has a piano. And if you don't know, in the piano seats, that's where I took a box and just dumped everything from my grandma's piano seat into this box. It was filled with recipe cards, obituaries, 
a lot of family ephemera, historical information. So you guys look in those piano seats, but totally reminds me of, of my grandma's piano. And she used to play the piano. I didn't remember that until several days ago. I'm like, yeah, grandma used to play the piano. And my grandma sold. She, my grandmother did this one thing with her kulaks. I guess they were called kulaks back in the day. My grandmother, she would um, take a pair of pants, not jeans, because she didn't wear, though she got on some jeans right here. I was going to say she didn't wear no jeans, but those are grandma jeans. But anyway, she would take a pair of pants, cut the pants, and then this is what she would do. Let me grab a piece of paper, because I thought it was so cute. I don't know where she got this from, and I totally hope to come across one of her shirts or pants like this. But this is what she would do to her, to her jeans. Or her pants after she cut them this is the leg part she would take scissors and do this to them I can see her doing this today and then she would tie a knot in the sleeve part she would tie knots right here so it would hang like that what do you call that I don't know why she did it but I I hope to come across some of her clothes um, like that. But she did, um, she used to sew. Oh, I just had a flashback, you guys. Um, remember, my grandma spent the last year here with me. And last year, like before her dementia got really bad, I showed her some sewing patterns. And I was shocked when she recognized what it was because she said she used to use sewing patterns. <laughs> I don't remember her sewing I remember her quilting, but I remember her talking about when I was younger, sewing. So that reminds me of grandma. This reminds me of grandma here. I don't remember grandma baking bread, but she made the best cornbread. Oh my goodness, people, the best cornbread, the best cornbread ever. Of course, she didn't write a lot of her recipes down, but I was 18 years old and me and a friend went to grandma's house so this was a long time ago and my grandma had made greens and the in this cornbread the best tasting cornbread i ever had even my friend was like this is the best cornbread and i said grandma what did you use what did you use because even back then i was into cooking and she showed me this one thing she used and i had never well i was young back then but up until this date I don't see rep recipes calling for this one thing. So now with my own recipe, I have several recipes for cornbread. But in my thank you, Jesus, I call it thank you, Jesus cornbread. I use this one ingredient from my grandma. <laughs> I use it. And then my Aunt Cheryl, the one who was in the picture that died, she um, make good cornbread one day. I'm like, what did you use? And she used something that I had never thought of or heard being used in cornbread. So with my thank you, Jesus cornbread, I take the one ingredient grandma uses and the one ingredient my aunt uses. And I, that's part of my thank you, Jesus recipe cornbread. <laughs> okay. This totally reminds me of my grandma with the summer hat, the watering can, all of this she didn't have a vignette like this, but this feels like her. And then this one. Um, and how I wish. My grandmother, I collect these flower sifters. I use them in my garden as planters. And my grandma had some. When I go back to her house, I'm going to look. Hopefully I can find them. I got rid of a lot of my grandma's cast iron. One year, I did a just a haul away, and people, I so regretted this. This was before, because now I use pretty much nothing but cast iron as far as skillet wise. I don't mess with the nonstick. See, the old fashioned grandma. That's what they used, and that's what my grandma used up in the whole time she was cooking. She used cast iron. These new age grandmas. <laughs> 
They got the Teflon. They got the nonstick. Well, I have reverted back to cast iron. The last several years, that's all I use. And I do have some of my grandma's cast iron pieces, but I got rid of a lot. And now when I look back, I realize the people who were there, because I hired cleaners to clean up my grandma's, they took everything out of her kitchen, everything, everything out. And they gave it a good wash down and they cleaned everything. This was in a t uh, this was my attempt to declutter, though it didn't help. Because <laughs> my grandma was still bringing in stuff from the garage, from wherever. But anyway, um, now when I think back and I remember the responses these ladies gave, I'm like, y'all take whatever y'all want. They were so excited. And I, I get it. Because my grandmother had that good cast iron. You can't find that anymore. And if you do find it, you're going to pay a lot of money. And the cast iron you buy in stores is not like it, it's not made the way it was back in the year. So that's one of my regrets. I just didn't know the value of it. But I'm remembering too, I, I do have, whew, I've never used them. I never used these before, but these are glass pots and they're in my favorite color, brown. I have two in two different brown colors. I I guess they were popular in the 70s. I don't remember them, but I do have them in my garage. I'm happy about that. But my grandmother in her kitchen, there's a lot of things I need to bring over, over to my home. And now when I, when I go over there, everything is so precious because everything old is new again. So now, of course, I'm going to be very careful concerning what I get rid of. I've shared this story before. When I, um, twice a year or maybe once a year now, in my neck of the woods, the city has what's called dump day or trash day, whatever they call it. You can put any and everything out on the curb and the city comes through and they'll pick it up for free. So I was taking advantage of those days by having haul away days where I just get rid of my grandma's stuff. And one particular time, I cleaned out my grandma's garage and got rid of a lot of books. Didn't have time to sift and sort through the books. I just needed to get rid of it. But the next day, and it was the Holy Ghost, the next day, I decided to go back to my grandma's house and just take a little bit of time and go through the stuff that I have put out on the curb. And mind you, people, those dump days, you get a lot of traffic. You get a lot of people who go through your junk because they find a lot of stuff that's not junk. But I went over there and lo and behold, I was maybe just several minutes into a bag and I pulled out this vintage cookbook and I opened it up. And my mom's name was inscribed in that cookbook, people. My mom had written her name, her address. She had written, I love you, on several pages. I recognized her handwriting, of course, but it was her name. And I had thrown that in the trash. I kid you not, that is the only thing I have from my mom with her name on it. That could be the only thing I have from her. So just imagine how priceless that is. And it's in my kitchen right now. And so from that experience, I learned to try to slow down a little bit. Because I know I probably got rid of books that had pictures in it, that had money in it. No telling, right? Okay, this is totally my grandma, people. Okay, this is totally my grandma. I have one of her benches in my backyard. My grandmother... I mean, stuff like this you could find in her front and in her backyard. The last couple years, there's been people asking me, as a matter of fact, okay, my grandmother got Meals on Wheels, right? The Meals on Wheels driver asked me if he could buy some of my grandma's. He wanted her bench in particular. <laughs> he asked if he could buy it. He asked, yes. And neighbors have asked. It was, um, and this is before my grandma died. Neighbors had asked, you know, if I was going to sell or if grandma was going to get rid of her, her lawn stuff. I'm thinking to myself, people, that's coming to my house. 
<laughs> so I had to hurry up and bring it over to my house. And I didn't mention in my grandma's backyard, which is now in my backyard, um, is a antique, antique iron singer, singer sewing machine. I actually have the base because several years ago, for the first time, my grandmother experienced a theft at her house. My grandmother had been living there 40 plus years, never had a theft, but someone went in her backyard and stole the antique sewing machine, but they left the base. So after I discovered that, I brought the base over and now it's in my backyard. <laughs> but yeah, all types of stuff you can find in grandma's um, house and grandma's yard. Now, I don't remember grandma ever having a bike, though, but this reminds me of her, especially this hat. But I don't remember her ever having a bike. She could have had a bike, but I just don't remember it. Oh, I didn't even see this image. This is pretty. So these, these images brings back a lot of memories about grandma, and I could go on and on and on about my beloved precious grandma. Um, today's the 26th. The 28th would make a month since Can she's passed away. And my life has totally changed. Um, my grandmother has been a part of my whole life. Like I said, I had a grandmother more than twice as long as I had a mom. My mom died when I was 17. But I've had a grandma for all of these years. So I've used that word grandma more than I've used the word daddy, mama. It was it was grandma and my life is forever changed. And another now. memory I have about my grandmother's house. Oh my goodness. My grandmother loved dolls. Loved dolls. And oh my goodness, she in her garage today, she still, but these dolls were in her living room. This is the memory I remember for years. You walk into her house and you see all of these crazy looking dolls. And they, <laughs> she had several that were tall. I had never seen tall dolls before. So these dolls were the height of like maybe a three or four year old. And they were all white. <laughs> she didn't have not one black doll, but she loved these scary. To me, they scared me because some of them were naked. But she had all these dolls just piled up and you walk into her house. It's the first thing you see. And I don't know where her love for dolls came in, but they always scared me. And I was so happy when she took those tall ones. I think they're out there in her garage right now. She put them out, but to this day, she still got some dolls in her living room. I probably asked her why she loved dolls, but I don't remember if I did, but doll collecting was one of her things, and she just, you know what? She probably made doll clothes for her dolls, too, but they were just always scary, and as I reflect... I'm thinking I was probably scared. No, they were just scary looking dolls. But I was thinking about Chucky. Remember the doll Chucky? Back in the year we had those scary movies. Um, Chucky and Nightmare on Elm Street and Jason. Those movies were most scary to me. But that doll Chucky... <laughs> I was going to say the reason why I was probably scared of the dolls was because of Chucky. But none of the dolls looked like Chucky. These were just some spirit, ghost-looking type dolls that my grandmother absolutely adored. Let's share this picture. Now, this picture, I think, this is old. This is probably like 30 years old. I remember this. This is my uncle's car, a Monte Carlo. I think that's it. So, oh, and there's my grandma had a white truck. This might be more than 30 years old. I think that's the white truck right there. But this is my grandma and her name, Sister Pirtle. I remember Sister Pearl when I was little. That's her. <laughs> we used to go to her house. But anyway, I'm sharing this picture because, well, her lawn is green. My grandmother believed in keeping her lawn cut and beautiful. But I'm sharing this picture because you see two of her chairs right here. My grandmother created vignettes. 
And this is not the one I have in my backyard. She probably got rid of this one a long time ago, but the ones I got from her house, they kind of sort of look like this, except like, well, I don't know. You know what? I don't know if they're chairs and this part has been removed or if they're planters. They look just like chairs, but you can, you can stick planters all the way down through it. But I wanted to give a little peep at, oh, and look, there's a duck. Oh, there's a chicken. Oh my goodness, because my grandmother loved to adorn. I didn't even realize those were there. She loved to adorn her yard with um figurines. There's a duck right there. How I wish I could come across that duck. There's a little chicken and you see some of her her flowers right there. But you see the bistro set right there. That's my grandma. She kept her yard beautiful and you could sit in the front yard and have a glass of tea or lemonade. And this is my precious grandma. This must have been a Sunday. I wonder where they were going. These were the good old fashioned days, you guys. Oh my goodness. And yeah, this was a long time ago. Wow. Back in the year, sometimes the date was stamped on the picture, but I don't see it here. But I love, love, love that picture of my grandma. And real quick, let me see. Well, here's a picture of my grandparents and my aunt. I got to find my grandpa hats too. But my grandmother got on a black hat there. And, oh, look at this one. My grandparents, after church, a lot of times we went out to eat and we were at Sizzler's here. You, you see half the name right there, but my grandpa, I got to find that hat of his and my grandmother got on this beautiful um, hat there. She loved jewelry. Oh my goodness. I do have some of her jewelry here. Unfortunately, it's mixed up with other jewelry. At least some of it is. It's mixed up with jewelry I have thrifted and found out junkin but my grandmother loved her rings her earrings and her necklaces i love this picture because i forgot all about that uh let's see what else i have so many pictures of my grandma um and i love this picture this was taken 20 something years ago at my grandma's house I love it because it's older and that's my daughter when she was about three and my daughter is 27 right now. I love it because I look at the walls. You could see some of these two, these three large vases came from the fair, they're vintage and there's a big teddy bear and there's a doll. I don't know what that is right there. There's a big teddy bear Hmm. So I love to examine and inspect curtains and the type of, um, there's a blanket or something on, on this couch right here. I think this boom box is still at her house. This frame on the wall is still there, but it's on this side over here. So I love pictures. I mean, I love to see my grandparents with my daughter, but I love to examine furniture and some, and figurines and things like that. So I will sit down and have fun going through the different pictures that I have from my personal stash. And then of course, I found some at my grandma's house. Like I, I just love this one. This is her house. She, she has a corner lot and a nice size lot because her backyard, you can't see that driveway right there, but her yard goes all the way there. She had a nice size lot. And, oh, Grandma, I'm so thankful for these pictures. And I am going, this video, I've already edited the video. 
I just keep interjecting. <laughs> but I love this one because look at the chicken and the little ducky. As a matter of fact, several years ago, Tuesday morning had a good clearance sale. And I purchased my grandmother a lot of things like this. And I put it in my backyard and never took it to her yard because she loves stuff like that. Oh, and they're standing right in front of, I think she planted a tree right here now, but she loved to make holes and add bricks around it to make a little planter. She has several little plots like that in her yard. Oh, I just love this picture. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, I don't know how long this video is. I feel like I've been talking forever, but it feels good to talk about my grandma. I want her spirit to live forever, and it will live forever, and I will forever talk about her because she has impressed my life. And I always would say, well, I'm too young to be a grandma, though I am, I am a grandma, <laughs> even if it's unofficial. As a matter of fact, though, I have a grandbaby due any minute. Let me check myself. Well, I can't check my cell phone. Yes. Yes. One of my inherited son, sons, um, his girlfriend, she's in the hospital right now. And though they're not um, my biological kids or grandkids, they, they're my grandkids. <laughs> and I had this thing because my husband has two grandbabies who are also my grandbabies. My whole thing was, don't call me grandma. I am too young to be called grandma. So the, the, the grandbabies call my husband G-Paw, and they call me G-Ma, right? <laughs> but after losing grandma, I'm like, I don't care. Y'all call me grandma. I don't want to be a new age grandma. No, there's no fun in that, right? You can call me grandma. But that might change, though. <laughs> but out of honor of my own grandma, I mean, man, they just don't make grandmas like my grandma anymore. And I want to hold on to that. I want to preserve that. And so for the first time ever, I felt okay with being called grandma because it's a good thing to be that type of grandma. Everybody don't deserve to be called grandma in my opinion so anyway um i i'm working on a larger heritage book i'm trying to sort out different ways to create ephemera out of things from my grandma and i'll be back to share tips in a video I've actually went through some of her things and I got I got some good tips for you all and I want to share them because at some point in life we're all going to experience the loss of someone but I have enjoyed this video oh my goodness and I know I'll come back and watch this video it'll be a good video for my sister and other family members to watch and Oh, Grandma, my precious Grandma. My precious, precious, precious Grandma. If you, um, if you once again still have grandparents or if you have someone in your family or in your life that's like a Grandma, and then you have time. You have time to make memories and preserve memories. I... It behooves you to do that. Make that phone call. Make the time to drop by and see that person. Take pictures. These last years of my grandma's life, especially the last year, every opportunity I had, and I had a lot, I was filming her, talking with her, taking pictures of her. And I'm so happy I did. Though I want more, I'm happy and pleased with what I have. And shame on, you know, family members who don't, who put it on the back burner, who neglect their grandparents. Shame on them. Shame, shame, shame. They're missing out. They're missing out. I mean, you can't pay 
for what the Lord blessed me with. It can't be bought. It's priceless. It's a gift. It's an honor. You know, it's a it's a privilege. It's a privilege. So if you still have your grandparents, if you still have a homespun type grandma or auntie or godmother, connect with them. Get their recipes. Record memories. Get their stories. And then if that day ever come when the Lord calls them home, you don't grieve like people who don't have what you have. You're not going to grieve like them. I miss my grandma, but I know she's in a better place. I have a lot of memories with her. A lot of love was shared you know, with her. So I'm not grieving out of guilt. I'm not grieving um, out of hopelessness. But there's a lot of joy, a lot of happiness there because I I got the memories. And I have things from her to keep her alive in my heart and in my spirit. So anyway, you guys, that's what I've been up to the last month. I want to thank those of you who've reached out to me out of concern. I thank you so very much. Thank you, Jill. Um... Annette, I read your comment and you mentioned that Jill Norwood mentioned me in a video. So thank you for reaching out and, and Jill, also thank you for your, your concern. I really do appreciate it. But a big shout out to all the homespun heirloom grandmas that are out there. Keep on being you. Today, I celebrate you. Today, I appreciate you. I tell you, you are a rare commodity. You are an endangered species. We must do what we can do to keep the old-fashioned grandma alive. Be you. Continue to give what you give to your families, those traditions. Keep it alive. You know what? I want to be a homespun grandma. I want to be like my grandma. Now, I just really feel sorry for the kids today. They're not going to know that type of grandma. But I am going to be that type of grandma. Hey, if you have been inspired to call your grandma, to visit your grandma, to write your grandma or your great grandma or a godmother or an aunt or anyone in your life or anybody, especially those that represent the spirit of the type of grandma I'm talking about, leave a comment below. Let me know what your plans are. Let me know what your thoughts are. Feel free to share stories of you and your grandma. Look, there's no stories like the stories shared with grandma, right? There's nothing like grandma's kitchen. There's nothing like grandma's food. There's nothing like how grandma talked because my grandma had a language that only belonged to her. <laughs> One of my favorite stories happened um, about a year ago, year and a half ago. And then I got to end this video because it's super long. But people, I can go on and on and on. As a matter of fact, after, well, I had edited this video, I now interjected this segment into the video. Well, when I went to go play it back, I realized part of my ending got cut off. I don't know what happened. But anyway, I was upstairs because I remembered I found a washboard at my grandma's house. <laughs> and I have it upstairs somewhere. <laughs> yes, one of her vintage washboards. And that made me remember I used to watch my grandmother and I actually used the washboard. I remember that washing clothes on the washboard and another thing my grandma would do though she had a washing machine for some reason she loved to put clothes in the tub and wash the clothes the clothes in her bathroom tub yes using her washboard but i need to find that washboard i couldn't find it but i know it's up there somewhere anyway now i forgot what i wanted to say but i get excited talking about my grandma if we see washboards today, they're decorative. I did find one at a store. But no, I have one and I believe it's old from my grandma. You only get that from your grandma because today we will not be caught hanging up clothes on the line or using a washboard, right? <laughs> 
but only only a grandma only a grandma would know about a um a washboard and my grandmother has a cast iron teapot that's on her stove right now i need to bring that over oh my goodness i'm just so excited talking about grandma but i want to know have you guys been motivated to contact your grandma? Have you been motivated to interview her, to get her recipes? Have you been motivated to connect with your grandma, especially during this time of this pandemic? We've had a lot of time at home. We really have no excuse, y'all. And if you still have a living grandmother, you are so blessed because there's still time to make memories. You can play catch up. Yes, you can. You can play catch up. So go ahead and catch up. I know catch up. It's been um a hot commodity <laughs> lately, but you can play catch up, people. Call up your grandma. Oh, the story I wanted to share. See, I'm everywhere. Um, about a year ago, year and a half ago, our our 15, well now he's 16, our 16-year-old had complaint to me about grandma. I had the dogs in the house and my grandmother was a big dog lover. She has always had dogs. Oh, I can't tell her story without sharing her love for dogs. But I had my three dogs in the house and I have a big dog, Oink. His tail is like a serpent. If he wags his tail and hit you, it's going to sting. But anyway, grandma was in her wheelchair and she didn't want the dogs around her. They had come in the house and of course they run to her and, and they want to lick on her and, and I guess Oink Tail was hitting her. And anyway, she kind of like went like this to him to shoo them away. Now the boy, that's what I call him, <laughs> he came to complain and he was like, ooh, grandma is hitting the dogs. And my grandma heard. And she was like, I'm not hitting them dogs. I'm not, I loves me dogs. I'm not hitting them dogs. But what she said that was so funny, she told the boy, she said, stop being a peace breaker. And I'm like, now what? A peace breaker? Is that in the dictionary? A peace breaker? I never heard that phrase, peace breaker. She said, stop being a peace breaker. Well, people, let me tell you what a peace breaker means. I didn't look in the dictionary because I figured that's that old Southern lingo, right? <laughs> that's the old fashioned grandma talking. The type of grandma that say you better straighten up and fly right. We heard that over and over again growing up. But anyway, a peace breaker, if you don't know, is somebody who breaks the peace. <laughs> I had never heard peace breaker before and I love it. I love to use it today. Don't be a peace breaker. Let me tell you, my grandma was a peacemaker. Yes, she was. She was not a peace breaker. <laughs> So on that note, if you like this video, why not like it? Give me a big thumbs up and I'm going to bring more videos offering tips and ideas on preserving memories and so subscribe if you're interested. All right, you guys, I feel a whole lot better. Thank you, Jesus. I want to thank you all for watching. Don't forget to leave your homespun grandma comments below. All right, bless.